Hey everyone, my name is Vedelin and in this video we're going to have a look at a new large language model called Lima or less is more for alignment. We're going to have a look at the paper that is available on the archive by Meta AI. We're going to have a look at the methods of training this model, what the data was used and then the evaluation results that compare Alpaca, ChatGPT and GPT-4 to Lima. Let's get started. The research paper Lima Less is More for Alignment is available on the archive and you can see that the authors are mainly from Meta AI and some of the are working at different universities. So the authors are starting with the general or original way to train large language models and this is using two stages. The first is war or language modeling, where they are taking essentially a word of text and trying to predict the next word from the text, and then they're fine tuning it using a reinforcement warning. So mostly this is called a reinforcement, a reinforcement warning from human feedback. And what this entails is that you are basically talking to this model and then scoring the responses and when the response is not good you are essentially flagging it as not good and then if it is good you're flagging it with good of course this can be on a scale and this way you are essentially providing uh, additional training to these models so this is the the original or the current way of training these large language models and then the authors of lima are actually using LAMA, which is their or Meta's 65 billion parameter model, and then fine tuning it with standard supervised warning. So essentially they have the questions and the answers, which are the labels, and they are just fine tuning it with 1000 examples. So they are picking prompts and answers to those prompts in a very specific way, and then they are training the model with that only with that. So the results here within the abstract suggest that this type of training is actually preferred compared to GPT-4 in 43% of the cases. So the responses from Lima are preferred to or GPT-4 in 43% of the cases. Then 58% of Lima responses are preferred to BART, which is the Google large language model. And then to GPT-3, we go up to 65%. We're going to have a look at how this is actually evaluated and whether or not it makes sense to compare the results in such a way. So here is a very good overview of what the data set contains. I recall that we have only a thousand examples and these examples are mostly taken from Stack Exchange. So we have uh, roughly 400 examples from there. Then we have Wikihow, which again contains questions and answers. Then writing prompts, which is essentially a Reddit subreddit. And then they have some natural instructions. And then the authors are actually providing themselves some examples. And these examples are actually 20% of the whole data set. And again, you can see that the development subset of the data is actually again provided by the paper authors. Then for the testing of this model, they're using ask a Reddit. So this is again a subreddit. And then authors from another group. So essentially they are splitting the authors into two different groups. And the authors from the other group are actually providing 230 examples in order to actually evaluate on the test set what is the performance of this model. Of course, the authors might have a lot of bias in order to train those types of models and they are very closely related. They're talking to each other. So even if the groups are separated, we can't be sure that there isn't any bias within the test set. So keep that in mind when you're evaluating these types of models. So one of the most important contribution of this paper is that this superficial alignment hypothesis. A model's knowledge and capabilities are warned almost entirely during pre-training, while alignment teaches it which sub-distribution of formats should be used when interacting with, user with users. So what this means is, or the authors are arguing, that the most important part of the training process is actually the pre-training, and then the final 
fine tuning is just talking or representing the way that your model is answering with the way that you want to answer. So in this case, they're taking Llama and this model is pre-trained on a very, very large data set that is essentially a raw text. And then they are just slightly fine tuning it in the way that they, it want, they want to respond using the 1000 examples and just those 1000 examples, which is a very small data set. So if this hypothesis is correct, so they're having a this co corollary is that one could sufficiently tune a pre-trained large language model with a rather small sets of examples. So this is the most practical part of this hypothesis is that you can use a very small subset of data fine-tune your model with that and get some uh, very good results. So fine-tuning is not that yet, at least. Okay, so the next part is that how the authors are actually creating these examples and they're talking about, we, uh, about how they do it. 200 training prompts with high quality answers, which we write ourselves. So again, this is the authors that are writing 200 of those examples. And then they're talking about preliminary experiment showed that this consistent format generally improves model performance. So if you're writing high quality prompts and training data, of course, uh, they are talking about that you are going to get much better models. So the data is really important, of course. So we also include 13 training prompts with some degree of toxicity or malvolence. So they're talking about different types of prompts that they can add to the data set in order to make the model more well-trained or more general. And here is the training lima part. They're pretty much fine-tuning with a lot of um, hyperparameters that are they're describing here. And the most important part from this, except for the parameters which you might want to, to have a look at if you're training your models or fine-tuning your models, they're talking about this new token or special end of turn token at the end of each utterance. So every time that you are switching between a user and a system, they're injecting this token within the prompt or the tokenizer in order to set or tell the model that the actual part of the speaker or the speaker is finished. So this is pretty clever. And here are the experimental results. So on the left, you can see a table that is actually evaluated by people. And on the right, this is an evaluation done by GPT-4. So of course, it is very hard to evaluate those types of large language models. And uh, I would say somewhat of a standard approach is to ask humans. And then another standard approach is to ask a very strong models such as GPT-4 to evaluate the responses. So here is in the very, very dark or not so dark, but still very solid blue. You can see the Lima wins, then the ties, and then the losses of Lima. So this is comparison between the different models. I recall that Alpaca was a fine-tuned version of Wama, and you can see that Lima is performing much better according to the humans and then according to GPT-4 as well. Then we have GPT-3. So you can see that Lima is not performing that well, but still winning about 44% of the time. And then according to GPT-4, it is winning even more. Then BART, which is the Google model, Lima is actually losing more compared to Lima, but still 33% of the time it is performing very well or beating BART. And According to GPT-4, BART is better compared to the humans. Then quote, you can see that this percentage is getting smaller right here, both according to the humans. And then you see that Lima is actually performing its worst compared to GPT-4, which is a very strong model, of course. And then according to GPT-4, Lima is actually performing 1% better, but then the ties are smaller so GPT-4 is actually owning Lima a lot. So this is the way that both humans and GPT-4 
is comparing the different types of models. And this is a methodology of how the authors are actually comparing these prompts. So they're talking about that with each step we pre uh, present or present annotators with a single prompt and two possible responses generated by different models. The annotators are asked to label which response was better or whether neither response was significantly better than the other. So they have to pick which is better or if it is a tie. So this is essentially the way that the authors are or the annotators are asked about which responses were better. Of course, there is a lot of more details right within the paper on how this model was evaluated. The main contribution of the Lima research paper is that you might have a small data set of high quality prompts or conversations, and you can use those to fine tune a very strong model according to your preferences, which is great because fine tuning these large language models is currently very slow. So they are talking about taking Lama, 65 billion parameter model, and then fine tuning it only a thousand prompts, which provides some very good results. Of course, when this model and if this model is open sourced and when we can take our hands on it, we can decide for ourselves whether or not the author's claim is really that important, uh, as they say. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.